friends. We are the Film Obsessed Couple, and I am Shelly. And I'm Scott. Welcome to today's episode. We are going to be talking, well, first let me back up. This is August, Mm -hmm. so we're just starting out August, and we're going to go back to our theme month stuff because we kind of went rogue. Yeah. But this month is going to be childhood favorites. Yes. Yeah. Our childhood favorites, not yours. Sorry. <laughs> well, if somebody wrote in, maybe we would. But I know, right? So. I mean, we totally would. If you have a favorite, write in. We would love it. Yes, yes, absolutely. So we're starting off with my favorite, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And every time when I hear that, I just can't help but hear the music in my head. From the show? Mm-hmm. The Teenage Mutant Ninja yes. Turtles. Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. Turtle power. That I, I read not too long ago was actually written by the guy who is the creator of Two and a Half Men. Oh, wow. Yeah. Crazy shit. He must be rich because that's... He's probably... I mean, I can't remember everything he's involved in, but Two and a Half Men was huge and... Yeah, right? And he's done other shows. Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay. Yeah, he is a millionaire. I bet. Possible billionaire. I mean, good for him because that's... You gotta be clever. It takes me forever to write something. Yeah. If I, especially if it's just off the top of my head. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not like it's Shakespeare. <laughs> He's writing <laughs> Big Bang Theory. <laughs> you just have four friends being like, oh, we're nerds. Bazinga. <laughs> and he's like, that's a perfect script. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. He just types into a computer nerdy science stuff and it's like Schrodinger's cat. And they're like, did you know what Schrodinger's cat is? Oh my goodness. I'm, I guess I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Well, you you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that? That is all of that, but we sure are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just wanted to say to all the people listening out there, bazinga. Bazinga. And, no. We gotcha. So one thing I do want to say is normally, you know, sometimes I put it at the beginning or the end, but we are on social media. I have now just started focusing on Twitter because, I mean, we technically are everywhere. But unfortunately, it kind of spreads me a little thin whenever I'm trying to post things on, what, five different platforms. So I've just been kind of focusing on Twitter here Mm -hmm. lately. And there's a great group of podcasters on Twitter. Yeah. I have came across some wonderful people and they're just very uplifting and it's really what you need as a podcaster especially when you're starting out because it's like crickets out there sometimes yes so it's just really nice to have to find a a little community of other podcasters but if you're not a podcaster we would love for you to join our social media on twitter Mm -hmm. which um if you click on the show notes i'll have a link there all you have to do is click on that link and then click follow that's it and if you don't have twitter you should probably get one like, just download the app. Yes, get one to follow us, but don't pay attention to it because I think there's a lot of negativity on there. But definitely get one and just follow us. Don't pay attention to anything else. It depends on who you follow on the shit that you get. Yeah. And you can block. I mean, you got to take care of your mental health, too. Block people. We I try s- to only do positive shit. Yeah, and we're not political. We don't get political on there. But I, I see a lot of political stuff that just makes me mad. So, oh, I know. And the people on there can be so angry. But we're trying to keep it positive. So, yes, if you don't have a Twitter, get one. But be careful who you follow. Yeah. There, Definitely follow us. There is one podcast, uh, which will remain unnamed because I honestly don't even remember what their name is. Um, I had to unfollow them, which was like a month or so ago. Yeah. Um. Well, it was actually after Roe v. Wade. Oh, really? Were they happy about that? They were. Oh, Jesus. And I'm like, I can't. Because, I mean, one, it shouldn't be on, I don't know, I try not to be too voiceful of my opinions. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of a little bit, but not like completely. And they were just going on and I'm like, I can't. Yeah. I can't even look at it because at the time I was just so sick to my stomach. So. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, yeah, like, <laughs> well, you were, <laughs> yeah, you were sick at the time, but um, yeah, Twitter and and not to go off on a rant, but Twitter is definitely a place where you can have someone post something that'll be like, I think rape is wrong, and then you'll have a bunch of people being like, Well, you know, really, I think you know, in certain <laughs> situations, it just seems like there's always somebody for the most terrible thing that can happen, yeah. Oh, if she was wearing a short skirt, yeah, you know, anyway. So. Let's not talk about no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. we could go on a huge squirrel moment in that. 
aspect. So we'll just stop it right now because we're here to talk about a movie. Yeah, I've seen this movie a ton. I used to watch it a lot when I was a kid. Um, I had the VHS of it, which for younger people, wow. if you're listening, is a big black thing you put in a VCR. Mm-hmm. <laughs> big black thing you put in a VCR. Mm. And I mean, it has to be big, right? Hey, yeah. <laughs> Before we watched the movie, I had to pull up the, the uh, commercial on YouTube because I always remembered there was a Pizza Hut commercial. And mm-hmm. I we watched it because I was like, well, if we're watching it again, I've got to see the commercial I would watch a million times before the movie started. But it's the commercial with the little boy playing baseball. And there's a song playing while he does it, but he lifts his glove up as a ball is coming towards him in the field and he catches it. Yeah. And it shows him like celebrating at Pizza Hut. Apparently Pizza Hut had a lot of advertising in this. Um, well, commercials and stuff for the movie, Mm -hmm. but weirdly enough in the movie is Domino's. Yeah. Pizza Hut is not in this movie, but they had a lot of ads for the movie. Right. Yeah. I, um, I heard that there were two different pizza distributors. I just didn't read on to who it was yeah. cuz I got into other stuff but it just hit me this morning cuz I was thinking about it I'm like oh yeah that Pizza Hut commercial I just remember it fondly cuz I used to watch it all the time and in my brain it's just associated with the movie but I was like wait a minute in the movie they eat dominoes Yeah so so as a kid when you watched this movie what did you get were you just all like excited because the turtles were yes. badasses mm-hmm. Wow Yeah yeah I used to jump around and pretend to know karate and Did you stuff do the little sidekicks like, <laughs> probably Achoo! probably so i know um i had like a stick my parents put had a stick that they would put in the back door to keep it closed at night oh yeah yeah and i would take that stick and kind of like play around with it like and... the sliding glass doors yeah you, yeah that's the old-fashioned lock. old-fashioned way you yes <laughs> They got they upgraded to better doors, but yes, I think my grandparents even did it as well. But back in the day, and I'm sure people still do this, but mm-hmm. they would have like a little long piece of wood that you would stick in between the door once you closed it. Yeah. So like if somebody was trying to break into it, the stick would prevent it from opening. <laughs> so during the day when we're not worried about that stuff, I would and it was kind of like leaned up against the door, I would take it and be like da 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 like Donatello. Wow. And play around in the in the yard and stuff and my collection of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys was insane. Oh, I bet. Your parents, just, yeah. they spoiled you rotten. They did. They did. They bought me everything and anything under the sun. And, you know, I'm very thankful for that. But as I look back on it now, I'm kind of like, uh, I wish maybe they didn't give me everything. Yeah. I feel like that kind of hindered me in a way. Like, now that I'm an adult, I can look back and see that there's probably negative aspects about that i know but at the time i mean oh my gosh i can just tell that your daddy's just like wants to make you happy yeah and he would just go over the moon you know just to do whatever yeah made you happy so and my mom has said that in the past too where they were like oh we'd go into a store and you'd start playing with a toy and when it was time to go you'd just start crying and we felt so bad we'd buy it for you (laughs) yeah oh man i had a friend a long time ago and her son would be like that and she honestly could not afford yeah to buy a bunch of stuff but she did and it was just it was kind of catastrophic on their marriage because really money problems and then the kid you know throwing a, a tantrum in the store yeah and she's like fine you can have that hot wheel you know or whatever so yeah it's it's tough with kids that's why i'm just like you know i'm just gonna stay away from that yeah i kind of wish going back that they would have limited it maybe that would have taught me a value of what I had, you know, yeah. but one of my dad's favorite stories to tell is at Christmas time when Power Rangers, like for the first year, they were huge. Like when they just came out, like the toys were like the hottest things you could find. And he went to Toys R Us and found a bunch of them and he just started putting stuff in his cart. <laughs> and the, I think there was somebody there that was like, oh, well, you can do one of each or something like that. Because they did have a sign that was like one item per person or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lady or a guy in the back with him was like, oh, you can do one of each is what that means. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. And he said that there was an old, uh, two older ladies standing there just looking at it being like, Power Rangers, what is this? (laughs) And he's like, oh, yeah, it's a new hot thing this year. Kids are wanting it. And they're like, oh, so they started getting some. But as he got to the counter, they were like, oh, wait a minute. You know, it's one item per person. And oh, no. my dad was like, well, that guy back there told me it was one of each. And the lady like looked for a second and was like, you know what? I'm only temporary here. Let's go ahead. And so he just bought it. And then he said he freaked out when they started ringing it up. Oh, yeah. Because those are not cheap. Like the figures and the the um, 
Jesus, whatever they call the things, the the robots. I can't believe oh, I can't remember I have them now. No this, idea. I want to say Zoids, but that's a different show, I believe. But the the Transformers things, they transformed okay. into a big robot. Okay. Um. So yes, my dad did love me, and my mom did too, of course. But well, they. Yeah. I just I had so many turtles toys, and I think there's even a picture of me back there wearing pajamas that was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I mean, hopefully you didn't have the comics at this time. I don't. I know I did have them at one point, but no, I know where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. Because evidently they were not for kids. They were more adult, yeah. Like I think in the first comic or first few comics, they find Shredder and they kill him, and that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like bloody. Yeah. And I guess. Because the way that it was described, because I I came across um, yardbarker.com. They just did a blog yesterday. Oh, really? About Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this movie that mm-hmm. we're about to do. And I'm like, this is perfect. Thank yeah. you for doing all the work for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was reading and they were like, yeah, it's basically a black and white uh, comic book. And mm-hmm. the only thing you see in color is blood. Oh, really? <laughs> so I'm like, holy shit. Do you have any now? I'm like looking over in all your comic books. None of them now. No, no. I remember we went to Oceans of Fun or Worlds of Fun. Well, we went to both, but I don't remember which one I got it. But my parents did buy me a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like single issue comic book while we were there. Hmm. So I remember reading it. It was weird. It was had something to do with like space or something. It was kind of out there. But I wonder if I could look that up now because I remember Donatello, the guy who wears the purple bandana. Mm -hmm. He was like all white. For some reason, he was, like, wearing all white, like, gear and stuff. He was, like, I don't remember, but I just remember reading it being, like, whoa, this is strange. Feeling very holy that day. I guess. <laughs> um, this has nothing to do with this, but talking comic books. One time when I was a kid, we were at the store, and what I would normally do, we would go to, um, geez, the place you used to work at. Miss O'Malley's? No, no, it was the... Uh, like the grocery store you used to work in the cafeteria. Oh, or the, Smitty's. Yes, Smitty's. Old, caf- old um, like price cutter type store. Mm-hmm. But we would go to Smitty's right by my parents' house and I would go to the book area and just pick up like a bunch of single issue comics and just walk around with my parents while they shopped and read. Yeah. And one time my parents were unloading groceries and they found an uh, Aliens vs. Predator comic. And they were like, oh, I guess this was in here and we just <laughs> didn't notice it. So I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> Um, so I, my first nudie magazine that yeah. I ever saw was in a grocery store. Really? Yeah. My brothers were looking at it and I had to, you know, of course they're older and I'm the little twerp sister and I had to get in there and be like, what you looking at? Oh yeah. And there was like this naked lady and I'm like, oh my gosh. Wow. Back in the day and before <laughs> packaging, I guess, huh? I think so. Yeah. I bought a Playboy one time at a Barnes and Noble when I was a teenager and I was like, I'd like to buy this, please. I was like so nervous. I mean, knowing my brother, Sean, he probably opened it oh, if yeah. it was packaged. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I got a Playboy in the mail one time when I lived with my parents. It was just this black packet, like this black plastic over the magazine. And I'm like, well, what is this? So I kind of opened mm. the package a little bit and I could tell it was a Playboy. And I'm like, well, I got to put this back in the mail. Someone's going to want this. So I was like, <laughs> at the time, I'm like, what was I thinking? I should have just kept it. <laughs> anyway. You're so innocent. Yeah. And cute. So one more question before we dive in. Yeah. Do you know like all the colors of the turtles? Well, ooh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, duh. Like why would I even yeah. ask that? Um, do you want me to list them? Yeah, do it. So Leonardo's blue, Donatello's purple, Michelangelo's orange, and Raphael is red. And then in the show, they had a TV show when I was kind of in middle school, which was very low budget. But they introduced a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, female called Venus de Milo. What? And she was light blue. Holy shit. Yeah, apparently the creator, I think it's the creator, hates this character so much. Oh, yeah. They, it's it a was, female, of course. Well, I don't know no, about okay. that. The show was very low budget. But at the time, I was in middle school, so I was like, holy shit, this is cool. But I went back not too long ago and watched like an episode on YouTube or like a clip. And I'm like, Jesus, this is cheap. This is cheap. Wow. <laughs> this is cheap as fuck. <laughs> oh my goodness. I guess they're like, no girls allowed, just boys. I don't know. Like, I don't think the creator of the comics had anything to do with it. So they created a new one and he was like, that's dumb. Mm. He was like, you could have done it better. Yeah. It's really hard to introduce something into something that's so popular. Yeah. So, I mean, you really got to do it right. And I just don't even see how you would do that here. What's funny about that show is that, you know, their bandanas. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the show was so cheap that you could see the eye holes for the people wearing the costume <laughs> underneath the bandana. Like it was like a little hole underneath the bandana. Oh, no. So it's that's when I went back and watched it. I was like, oh boy, Man. they didn't have any money for this. So, okay, okay. I came up with one more question. Yeah. Do you think this movie held up? I do. You know, like through time. It's definitely the most serious of them. As we go further in the movies, they get more campy, like kind of more mm. childish out there. The sequels. Yeah. The second one, Secret of the Ooze, we're getting weird. And then the third one, they go back into time in ancient China. Damn. And um, we just got stories upon stories. Now, I swear this is going to be a three-hour episode. We will episode. get to the movie eventually, people. Hold on. So for the third Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie... I don't think it was called Turtles in Time. That's a game, I think. Anyway, the third one, when they go back into ancient Japan, Mm. um, my parents at the time did take me to go see it at the theater, which was the theater I would end up working at years later. I think it was Dickinson 8 at the time. But there was some radio station there or some giveaway where this guy was giving away, like, toys, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys. Oh, neat. And everybody around me, basically, it felt like was getting called. They would be like... Oh, if you have uh, sunglasses on, uh, come up here. Oh, that guy's got glasses. And I hate that. I was young enough. It was 1993, so I was five. Mm-hmm. So I was bawling. <laughs> I was crying because I was like, I want to do it. And I guess the way my dad tells it is like that guy, that radio guy saw me, and he saw my dad was wearing like a Kansas City jersey or, or Ohio jersey, probably yeah. Ohio. But he was like, if you got a uh, Ohio jersey on, and my dad came down and Aww. I got like a because it was in Japan there was a bunch of guys and horses and stuff so I got like a big horse with like a little guy on top oh that was nice yeah I always oh man I hate that because I'm like if you can't give to all the kids yeah it's almost like you shouldn't give it to anybody because I always hated feeling left out yeah yeah I know and, and that was back in the time when I would make myself so sick because I would get so excited to go to the movies <laughs> I would get so such bad migraines because I would get so excited. Like we That's went and adorable. Yeah, we went and watched the Three Musketeers with Kiefer Sutherland. Mm-hmm. And I remember I had the worst migraine. My dad had to sit in the car with me outside while my mom and sister watched the rest of the movie. Aww. But I would just make myself so excited to be like, I can't wait. Ah! And I would just make myself so and sick. Be like I'm sick now. I can't. <laughs> yeah, I would just get oh, the worst sad. migraines. That's adorable, but sad. Oh, gosh. So let's go through this cast and talk about the movie that everybody is just dying to hear. Okay. We got Judith Hogue, who plays April O'Neil. She, funny enough, was not asked back for any of the sequels because she bitched and complained the whole time. You're out of (laughs) here. Apparently, she was not happy that they would film six days a week, which I can get. But then she also complained about how violent the movie was. I mean, come on. I mean, you got to know what you're getting into. Ninjas. Yeah. Come on. And Robin Williams helped her with her character. They were filming a movie together at the time, but he had, he was a huge nerd, so he had a collection of comics, and he he let her read his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics. Yeah, I have that in my notes. Oh, Jesus, Thanks I'm sorry. Thanks for stealing that. It's cool. No, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just you kidding. You gave me a face, and I'm like, I wonder what that face was. I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> I was going to say, no, it's totally fine. Um, But what you're talking about, she was on the set of Cadillac Man. Yes. Um. And yeah, Robin Williams did. He was a huge fan. So if she's reading these comics that are as bloody and violent as you're saying, she's mm-hmm. got to know what the hell they're doing. Um, yeah. You're making this movie about a violent comic book violent as well? I don't like this. Maybe she's just like, oh, they can't make it this violent. It's for kids. I don't know. And that's the problem. It's not. That's what the other movies do is they start to go for kids. And it's like, you know, as a kid, I was very happy. But now I'm kind of like, right. eh, make it a little more, make it a little more serious. Mm-hmm. So Corey Feldman, he played Donatello. Yep. Which I had to put the colors next to all of them because I have no fucking clue. Oh, really? He did not play him in the second one, but did come back in the third. Yeah. Um. Oh gosh, you know how I am with names. This is good practice. <laughs> Elias. Cotius. Cotius. Mm-hmm. Looks like Cotis. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but he played uh, Casey Jones, which was the love interest of April. O'Neill. Yep. I'm glad I remembered that. We actually watched this movie like a month ago, I think. <laughs> Almost, it feels Jesus. like. And I did not read through my notes, so this should be fun. Uh, Josh Pius? Pace. 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 He played Raphael. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun fact, which I don't know, hopefully you don't know this, but uh, he was very claustrophobic when he played in the suit. 
Yeah. So every time when the director called cut, he was all like jerking the head off. And it's yeah, like, oh, yeah. Ugh. He is the only one also to do the voice and be in the suit as well. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, the people that vo- that were in the suit did not voice the turtles. And I guess he went on and did other things. Um, he was in um, CSI. No, what's the one with, um, we used to watch it all the time, with the lady cop. Uh, God, why is my memory so uh, bad? Um, Special Victims Unit, SVU. Yeah, I was like, I could see the... Like, dun dun. Yeah, he played a <laughs> politician on there or something. But he also, they wrote a, later in the show, they wrote him as being like a pedophile or something. No oh, shit. I think they found his computer or whatnot, had stuff, but yeah, he was on that for a while. Deek. And then we have Robbie Rist, mm-hmm. uh, Michelangelo, and Brian Tucci, Leonardo, Sam Rockwell. He played the head thug. That sounds familiar. Yeah. That's why, that's why, you know how I've said thug in the past? Yeah. I'm like, man, that's such an old term. It is. I'm freaking old, people. No. I'm not that old. But Sam Rockwell, yeah, did go on to many different things. He won, he won an Oscar for that terrible Three Billboards movie. <laughs> oh, wow. Leaf Tilden, he played, oh, I have Donatello and the Foot Messenger. So that's his actual, the guy who was in the suit. Oh, shit. Okay. He plays the guy, if I'm remembering correctly, I think he plays the one where they're talking to April in the subway, and he's like, we have a message, and he opens his hand and slaps oh. her. Okay. I, I think that's the same guy. Cool, 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 cool. All the people that play the turtles are in the movie at some point. Okay, that's all I listed, but do yeah, you want to go through that, anything else? No, that's good. Josh Pace, who plays uh, Raphael, is in the movie. He's in the cab when Raphael is chasing Casey Jones. He goes, what the heck was that? Yeah, they all kind of have cameos. Like mm-hmm. the people that were in the suits, they have cameos. Um, one of them was the pizza delivery guy. Yeah, he's the guy, oh, come on, I couldn't find the place. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, slip it through the holes. Yeah, where he's like, 122 and an eighth. I could, t- I could, I swear to God, I could close my eyes and just quote this movie to you right now. Oh, which it was kind of, now that kind of ring, because we're getting ready to go to New York. Yeah. And this was, this whole movie's kind of featured in New York. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I read, because I've been reading up, because I'm not about public transportation. I've yeah. never done it, so I'm reading up on it. And they're like, oh, if you give directions, give the cross streets. Like, 8th and... Yeah. Fucking, I don't know. Billboard. I don't know. You just said billboard, so that stuck in my head. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you give the cross streets instead of the actual address. Oh, okay. So I think that's what they were doing here. As they were given the cross streets. Oh, gotcha. So they were like one eighth because it wasn't quite an intersection. Yeah, I was taking that to mean it's like gas where it's like three seventy five and a ninth and yeah. nine tenths nine or whatever. Tenths. <laughs> That's what I always took this to be is that like they're in the sewers. So they put it as one twenty two and one eighth. So he's like one twenty two and an eighth. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's all I've got. You get you. Let's see what you got. Uh, well, we can go through the movie a little bit, I suppose, you know, um, we start the movie with just a huge crime waves going on and, and yeah. I like, I like this kind of, you know, it's, it's things that I would have missed when I was a kid, but like the seriousness of the crime in the city, that's like, they keep going back and forth through it to how bad it's getting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a scene where a lady's watching her TV on her, like her balcony in her apartment. Yeah. On the fire escape, it looks like. Uh-huh. She, like, looks away for a second, and you just see these hands come out and take it. And then she comes back, she's like, hi! Like, they were just sitting there waiting for her to turn their head and, no, boop. Yeah, because April, you hear her, she's doing a news report the whole time talking about how bad it is. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, the mayor, you know, I don't think he's really doing much or, or whatever. But there's another one that's really cool, or cool, but shows you how deep this goes, where... Someone gets his wallet stolen while they're, like, standing. Mm-hmm. And, like, the wallet gets passed between, like, eight different people. Yeah. Before finally getting handed off to this redheaded kid. Yeah, and it was so funny because they were, like, you know, they think it's random. But I'm, like, this is pretty organized. Yeah. Yeah, no. And I think, I don't know if this is when she mentions it, but April is the one who's, like, the foot. We think it's, like, some mm. f- some gang, organized gang called the foot. Mm-hmm. And then we think, I think it was where we also see a, uh, like a shot of kids crawling underneath the fence going into some abandoned warehouse, it looks like. Right. Yeah. Which, so we're going to get to see the layer already. Yeah. Which this warehouse where all the kids play and well, as the main guy, Tetsuo, I think is in, no, not Tetsuo. Well, the, the main, the second in command guy, bald headed guy. 
he he says um he bumps into a little kid while he's walking around and the kid's like all freaked out and he's like go play <laughs> Smoke some cigarettes. Well, that I was shocked at. Yes, there's kids playing pool, and one of this very young kid has a big cigar in his mouth. Yeah. Um, which I read was a, a homage to the Pinocchio movie. Because in the movie, they all smoke cigars, and then they turn into donkeys because they're bad kids. Oh, no. Okay. But yeah, I was like, this kid, I don't know how they would have hid this. This kid is really smoking a cigar. <laughs> but this warehouse was also used in The Crow as the main warehouse of the bad guy. Oh, really? Which the bad guy in The Crow is Michael Wincott, who was in Nope. He played the film director. Oh, wow. Yeah. We just watched Nope not too long ago. Fantastic, Did. fantastic movie. Yeah, Scott fell asleep. Well, it took I a minute to, to get going. That. <laughs> it took a minute to get going. <laughs> it did. Um, <laughs> and the theater was just so hot. Mm -hmm. I was like sweating and I could feel it. I'm like, oh boy. But yeah, the beginning is a little slow. He's like walking a horse in a field at the beginning at night. And I was, yeah, it's it was. It's very quiet. Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. It's so funny because it kind of starts out a little a little scary. Yeah. And then it just kind of, boop, drops off. And then, then towards the end, whoa, your mind's going to get blown. If you haven't seen it, you should yeah. see it. We're not going to ruin it. No, not at all. Um, one of my favorite shots in here uh, when we're seeing the people stealing stuff is there's this dude with a truck. And he opens the back of the truck and you see like all this equipment or TVs and stuff. And he walks over to the building to have like this guy sign the paperwork. And then he takes him like two seconds. He walks back to the truck and it's unloaded completely empty. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, he goes, ah. He's like, oh, darn it. My my stuff on my truck got stolen again. Like, how the hell do they do that? But I do like that. I got a little voice going. <laughs> So we see April O'Neil. She's the reporter, and she get, she leaves the news station, and she's walking down the street, and she sees these thugs breaking into like the news van. I think Sam Rockwell is here. You know, they start to mug her, and then you see this what what Raphael has these like three pronged. Mm -hmm. They're called sighs, and you see this sigh come out of nowhere, and it like hits the light, and knocks it out, and then you just hear the turtles beating the shit out of these guys. Like, uh, you know, like the punching sounds, you know, and everything. Like I just kind of wanted those. Big like pow, boom, bang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this part kind of scared me a little. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope she doesn't get hurt. Yeah, she's selling it. She's like screaming her head off. Mm -hmm. I got a life, bye bye. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, you see the sigh, and then the lights come up, and the police are there, and all these guys are like tied up, and the police are like, oh, are you okay? And then you see go down to the sewer, and you see like these eyes looking from out of the sewer. Mm -hmm. And then there's where you get the big title sequence. But this is a big scene where it's kind of like going throughout the sewer with the music going. Like, da 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 mm -hmm. And you get the turtles, like, in a shadow first, talking kind of how it went. And then you get one of them jump out from around the corner, and that's when you get the title. They're like, yeah! <laughs> so, yeah, the turtles, they're all celebrating. They say that this is, like, their first time they've done this. That they've gone out there and actually beat up some people. Yeah, they were very excited, and they started using some of their lingo, which I, I just love, you know... We've, we've kind of gotten weird in our, what is it? It's not lingo, but, you know, different. Yeah, slang. Different, slang, yeah, thank you. They're all like, dudes, do that. Well. You know, major, major butt kicking. Well, they're all surfer dudes, basically. Yeah. Awesome, excellent. And then Lee, or, uh, Donatello, being the nerd, he says something like, um, he goes, Bossa Nova, I think if I remember right. <laughs> they're like, Bossa, Bossa Nova? Nova. What the and he's fuck? like, Chevy Nova? Or a car, and they're like, uh... <laughs> yeah, too late. So they go into their lair, which is in the sewers, and it's it doesn't look too bad. I mean, yeah. later the redheaded kid, Danny, has been sleeping down here for a while. It seems like I'd be afraid of hobos or whatever, but... <laughs> I think the couch was pretty broken down and ratty. I imagine. I would not have wanted to sit on that. Yeah, I imagine all. they are just finding this shit down there. So it probably smells awful, but... I can... Oh, look. Which, by the way, these sewers are gigantic they're huge mm -hmm. um but we get to meet them like S splinter is the gigantic rat he is their father slash master yeah. and it's where he tells them you know they're like we did it we first time we kick some ass and he you know tells them that they should never be seen and Raphael is the hothead he's the one he's kind of pacing back and forth in the back and he i'll do the i'll do the line because i know it but he's like i lost a sign <laughs> Um, the actor decided to give him like a Brooklyn accent. 
I read online. Oh, yeah. What? But he's like, it, Matt Splinter's like, then it is gone. Which I don't know if that's a racist voice. It's just kind of how he does it. No, yeah, he is. I mean, it's just like very... It's a smoking voice. Zen like, master-ish. Yeah. He's like, then it is gone. And he's like, but I can get it back. I can get it back. He's like, nope. <laughs> So they're talking, and you hear Michelangelo like ordering pizza in the background. They've got a payphone down there, and you hear him. He's mm-hmm. ordering pizzas, and he's like, "No anchovies." He's like, "You put anchovies on this," and then Splinter throws like a phone book at him. <laughs> oh, it just kind of shows you know how close they are and how they kind of kid around with each other. Yeah. So, and Splinter, he's just this one of the very first scenes we have with him. He starts talking about how he's gonna die one day. Yeah, he's just I mean, like, one day I will be gone. Get depressed here. Jesus. Yeah, he just keeps telling them they need to come together and everything. But yeah, he's like, one day I will be gone. And you will need to come together. Yeah, maybe it's like later it gives you that, oh no, is he going to die? Yeah, probably so. So they all start meditating and this is where the turtles start dancing to wipe out. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and Leonardo's like, well, it's like meditating. <laughs> so this is the pizza scene we were talking about michelangelo is waiting for it underneath the sewer grate and donatello is like uh, skateboarding down in the sewers and donatello is all like hey did you know what splinter said you know and he's like we're about being alone without him here and michelangelo's like pizza guy's got 30 seconds <laughs> and donatello just keeps trying to talk to him and he's just so worried about this pizza yeah and he's like well that's it 30 minutes three bucks off but the actor who plays Michelangelo shows up as a pizza delivery guy, and he puts this pizza, like, sideways down a grate. Which I can't even imagine what that pizza's going to look like. Well, we show we show him eating it here in a minute, and it's fine, but, like, I'm assuming this pizza shifted to the bottom of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, everything on it would have just fallen. Or it just fall out of the box, because those boxes aren't really that sturdy. Yeah, I guess. Well, um, he hands in the pizza, and Michelangelo gives him some money, and... He was like, hey, hey, you're short. And he's like, you're 30 minutes late, dude. And he's like, come on, I couldn't find the place. <laughs> and this is Michelangelo's, one of his famous lines where he's like, wise men say never pay full price for late pizza. <laughs> yes, that is a saying. They don't do that anymore, though. I guess not. It's a joke. You know, it's kind of like, oh, 30 minutes or it's free, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, back in the day, that's what pizza places would do. Yep. And. I think delivery was not as common, so they yeah. were trying to get it going, but now everybody does delivery, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Squirrel moment here. I re- I watched a video the other day of this guy. It was like it looked like it was some sort of dental office or, or doctor's office, but this guy went in, and he was like, he did deliveries for Chipotle, and he's talking to this lady at the desk, and he was like, I delivered you Chipotle yesterday. And you wrote on the thing that it never got delivered. And I've gotten fired from my job. Oh. And he was like, did you get it or not? And she's like, oh, I I don't know. He's like, what's a corporate number? I'm going to get you fired. And yeah, dude, it sucks. Holy cow. It's, I don't think those people get treated very well. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah. Like, all you got to do is just say you didn't get it and they get fired. But that doesn't seem right. You think, I think there's probably some underlining causes there. Yeah. Maybe maybe there's more to this story that we just don't know. Well, Raphael, he's all pissed off that he lost one of his weapons, so he goes out to see a movie, dressed as like a uh, flasher. He's got a big trench yeah. coat on. <laughs> like he's going to go flash people. He's got a trench coat and like a hat on. Let me see your turtle shell, buddy. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. If I was in the theater and I saw a dude sitting in there like that, I'm like, he's, he's jerking off. Oh, totally. <laughs> He is naked under there, and he is <laughs> jacking off. <laughs> yeah, he's not taking that. It's like it's like 60 degrees in here, and he's not taking his jacket off. Yeah, he's playing with himself. Jerking off. He, Which they did that in the cartoon, from what I remember. They would go out they in would disguise. Jerk off? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they would go out in disguise. <laughs> That's how they teach little boys what to do. I guess so. Well, um, well Raphael, he sees a guy snatch a lady's purse. And he yeah. trips this dude, and the purse throws it back to the lady, and the guy's all like gonna make a move on him. And Raphael like pull like a like he's got a gun. He points to his side, and he's like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> "Don't want to mess with me." Yeah. So the guy runs away and jumps over. I'm assuming into Central Park. 
Mm-hmm. Most of this movie I read was actually filmed in North Carolina with mm-hmm. some shots in New York City to make it, you know, come together. Make it look real. Yeah, I'm assuming that their layer is a set. And maybe even, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure they set, they filmed it in a, uh, the last, what I'm trying to get at is the last scene where they're all in like the neighborhood when they're fighting on the roof and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I was thinking to myself at the time, like, is this New York? I don't know if no, this would have been New York. That was built. And so was their underground. Yeah. They had to like dig underground. And then I, I, re- I couldn't cre- quite understand it the way that it was worded, but I guess when they started digging down, they ran into some water. Oh, shit. And so they had to pour concrete Mm -hmm. to block the water so it wouldn't flood. Oh, Um, wow. But I would imagine they would need concrete anyway. But anyway, I don't know. It was weird. But yeah, yeah, they they built that whole thing, which was part of like the $13 million budget they had. Which now $13 million would make nothing. nothing. Yeah. Which is funny. This was the most expensive independent film made until the Blair Witch Project. Yep. Wait, most successful. It was the most successful independent movie made until the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, I guess maybe maybe it made more money. It did, which right. That's successful, yeah. Because I don't think the Blair Witch Project would have cost more than $13 million, but God, no. most successful, yes. Yeah, so, and Corey Feldman kind of got screwed over by that. He got paid $1,500 to do the movie yeah. with the impression that it would be kind of a low-budget indie movie, uh-huh. and it went on to make like millions of, mon- of dollars. That sucks. So maybe he didn't come back from the second one for that Yeah, he's reason. all like, you paid me shit. Um, well, Raphael chases this dude into Central Park and he finds, he runs into Casey Jones. Yeah. And he is just kind of this vigilante wearing a hockey mask. He's got a hockey stick. And in this, he's got like a bag of different kind of, uh, sports equipment. Oh. I think he's got like golf. Yeah, that's right. No, he pulls a golf club later when Mm -hmm. he's fighting. Yeah. It's what his weapons are. Yeah. They're just like sports. What is that? Is it a wiffle bat? Those cricket bat. Cricket bat. Yeah, yeah, I had one of those. Yeah, because he's he calls Raphael a punker. He's like, "What? What are you a punker?" <laughs> he's like, "I hate punkers." <laughs> yeah, whatever the slang that is. But <laughs> there is a funny line in here where um, the the two guys that they're chasing run off, and Casey Jones and Raphael are just fighting each other. Mm-hmm. But Casey Jones is like swinging at Raphael with a bat, and R- Raphael like kind of catches it in his hand, and he says. A Jose Canseco bat. And he's like, tell me you didn't pay money for this. <laughs> Which, he his reputation has gotten even worse. But Jose Canseco was known for, he came out and said that he was doing steroids. Oh. He's known as being a huge asshole. He broke it, broke the story on like how many people were using steroids in baseball. Oh, shit. Said that he shot like Mark McGuire up. Yeah, so I people think I were, remember that. People were pissed at him at the time. There's a... Uh, show that used to be on called The Surreal Life where a bunch of celebrities would live in a house and he, they showed him doing a book signing of his book about his tell-all about baseball and steroids and stuff. Wow. And all these guys were coming up and they're like, you ruined the game. You realize, you know, you're ruining the reputation of the game for what you're doing. And he's like, yeah, thank you. And they're like, how could you? And just all these people wow. talking shit to him. <laughs> oh, that would be awful. But he deserves it because I cannot stress it enough. He is a huge asshole. Oh, man. He did a guest spot, a guest voice on The Simpsons, and as himself. And apparently, he like The Simpsons people, like the creators and stuff, said that he was like very difficult to work with. Oh gosh, that's <laughs> awful. Yeah, like we're trying to present this opportunity for you, and you have to be an asshole about it. Yeah, I think they make him in the show to be a hero. He like saves everybody. This has been oh, a long time. Wow. But they came out later, and they were like, it actually worked as a very nice joke because he's a huge piece of shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, in the cartoon, he's known as the, the nicest guy, but in real life. <laughs> <laughs> the only way he's nice is when he's not real. So, that's kind of the joke, is he's like, Jose Canseco bat. And uh, he pulls, yes, Casey Jones pulls out the cricket bat and knocks Raph into a trash can. Mm-hmm. Which, did you read the trivia on this part as well? No. I guess when Raphael goes into the trash can, the head of the turtle caved in and broke the nose of the guy in the suit. Oh my gosh. Oh no. And I I rewatched this little clip before we started recording. There is you can see him grab his nose when he gets out of the trash can in the suit. Oh wow. Like it just looks like Raphael's kind of grabbing his nose as if he's hurt. Like, but oh what happened? Apparently the guy broke his nose and was kinda of like, Oh god, oh jeez. Oh wow. That must have hurt. Yeah, Shit. I bet so. Thanks for taking one for the team, buddy. So we move on. We've got April O'Neil. She's trying to investigate like what's going on here and her boss, Charles, is trying to 
tell her to lay off. He's you know, in charge. Charles in charge mm-hmm. of our days and our nights. <laughs> Um, but then we get a shock. I don't know if it was supposed to be a shock, but the kid who stole the wallet is the boss's son. Yeah. His name is Danny. Right? Danny boy. Yeah, which apparently he the, the shirts he wears in the show, in the movie are all Sid Vicious t-shirts, who was a set guy from the Sex Pistols, mm. which he was known, again, not a very nice person, but he did heroin all the time. Mm. He was hired for the Sex Pistols because he had the look, you know. He just looked like a punk rocker guy. Wow. Some I think, you know, he couldn't play, so they would unplug him or turn his volume down. He was just there for the looks. The looks, yeah. And he's iconic. Like, when you think of Sex Pistols, wow. you think of Sid Vicious. But Yeah, I do. <laughs> I was like, really? Wow, I didn't know you knew. You paused knew. like, what? I was like, I didn't know you knew the Sex Pistols. <laughs> no. But he... <laughs> Um, he was very self-destructive. He woke up one day. He had a girlfriend named Nancy, and there's a very good movie called Sid and Nancy with Gary Oldman. Mm. But he, they were so bad for each other. They just oh, did drugs wow. all the time together. And he woke up one morning to find that she had been stabbed to death. Holy shit! And there this was happened in real life. Yeah. Wow. And they didn't know. I mean, he he didn't remember because they were high on heroin. Like, he didn't remember what happened the night before. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole story of, like, did someone break in to try to steal their drugs or whatever they had? Yeah, I love did, true crime, you know. Yeah, you this know. It's great, you know. Did he stab her to death? It's kind of just still up in the air. But before he was convicted or, you know, acquitted, whatever would have happened, he died of a heroin overdose. Damn. Yeah. Wow, that's tragic. So my whole point to that is, do you want to know how your kid is fucked in the head? Is if all he wears is Sid Vicious shirts. Yeah, I you're mean, like, that's a true sign. You're like, uh, Danny, do you know the story behind that guy? Uh, you, you don't, you're you not trying to find a girl named Nancy, are you? Let's go see a therapist <laughs> right away. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'd be like, um, do you know what Sid Vicious has done? <laughs> Let me see your arms. Is there needle marks? I think he would cut like a swastika in his flesh too. Not like he was a Nazi, but just kind of like, look how fucking crazy I am. Wow. Yeah. But uh, Danny, in he's sitting in the apartment while Charles is talking to April and he sees April just has like a $20 bill hanging out of her wallet. Who has that? I don't know. Jesus. Precariously placed. So it's like just dangling. And you can tell it's old. Yeah. Like, now looking at it. Oh, you're yeah. You're like, oh, that's an old $20 bill. So Danny takes it. He does this thing where Charles is trying to talk to him and Danny puts headphones on and Charles is like, you see, you see, that's what he does. When I try to talk to him, he puts his music on. Yeah. It's like the signs are there, buddy. You just got to look at it. Yeah. So we see a video or like a news report of April interviewing the chief of police, which I forgot to look it up. This guy seems familiar, but he's got a very iconic voice, but he... She's interviewing him about the crime wave, and she asks him on the air if he's ever, if it has anything to do with the foot. And he was like, the foot, apparently, they mentioned it was an ancient group in Japan. And he was like, uh, no, Miss O'Neill, I don't think this has anything to do with an old gang from Japan. And she gets bitch out, bitched out in his office later. What was his name? It's just Chief. I don't know what his name was. She's the Chief. Oh, Chief Stearns? Yes. Raymond Sarah? Hmm. S-E-R-R-A? He definitely seems like he is from New York. It's familiar. I mean, they show, like, current pictures Yeah. on some of the cast when you look at it, and he looks familiar. I don't know. Shit. But April and her crew are kind of wrapping up all their stuff, and that's when Stearns uh, calls her into the office to yell at her. And as we see her go into the office, we see Danny has been arrested by the police. And But April goes into the chief's office, and she's, like, talking to him, and... He ends the the very classic thing where she's like, well, sir, are you going to be looking into the Foot Clan? I think you should really look into these people. And he's like, are you trying to tell me how to do my job? Yeah. <laughs> he's like yelling and shit. Well, he's just pissed off that she's bringing up this Foot Clan thing because he doesn't think it has anything to do with it. This is where she goes into the subway. She's trying to catch the train and she missed the last one that goes. Yeah, and then she's, like, by herself. Yeah, which, if this was at night, this would be kind of freaky. If Yeah, if that happens to us, yeah. we're, we're getting the fuck out of there. <laughs> well, yeah, she missed a train, and she's standing there, and then all of a sudden, there's all these Foot Clan soldiers, which I think this, like we said, this guy is the dude who played Donatello, but he's like, I have a message for you and your mouth or whatever, and he puts his hand, like a fist out, 
and he opens it like he's going to show something to her in it. And she's like, oh, what is it? And he just smacks her in the face. <laughs> and he's like, shut it. That's kind of funny. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure, that's awful. You should never slap somebody. But, boy, if you were going to slap somebody, that is just a bitchin' way to do it. Yeah. And I think this guy's doing kind of a bad act, Chinese, J- Japanese accent. Mm-hmm. He's like, April O'Neil. <laughs> Like, ooh, that didn't age well. Uh, Neil, you got to stutter. But like, these guys are from New York. We find out later they're recruiting young kids. Like, these guys are from New York. Mm-hmm. He'd be like, April O'Neil. <laughs> Maybe that's part of their transition. That's why their Japanese is so bad. Is because they're yeah. not really Japanese. They're like, the the main, the second in command is like, if you want to be in this club, you have to talk Japanese. Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, yes, a sensei. I'm like. <laughs> Yes, yes, that is very offensive. Good. Good, Dad. Yeah, that's how we like it. Yeah, so we solved it. Yes, that's why it doesn't sound, because he's like, April O'Neil, <laughs> I have a message for you. I don't know why he's turning French now. It'd be funny if they have different accents every time. <laughs> April O'Neil, I've got a message for you. Your mouth. Shoot it. <laughs> Shoot it. <laughs> but like, well, we don't know where this gang is from, because it seems like they've got accents from all over. Just this one guy the other day, when he before he hit me, he spoke in French, he spoke in Chinese. <laughs> we don't know who they are. <laughs> hey, April O'Neil, I have a message for you. Shoot it. <laughs> oh, I, I'm from Shrek. <laughs> oh, shit. The movie hasn't come out yet, but I'm Shrek. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to jump in, but I have no idea. Yeah, it's hard. it was hard. I was trying to do a Japanese from... Um, French, and it's hard to do. Yeah, you're doing so good. Well, Raphael comes out of nowhere, and he beats up all the Foot Clan, and he takes April. He mm-hmm. walks down the subway line and takes her into the sub- into the tunnels where they live. Going to the sewer, baby. Yeah, and um, this is one of my one of the lines I just remember burned into my memory. Where I think Leonardo is like, "Are you crazy that he brought her there?" Yeah, and he's like, "Yes, Leo, I'm crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm crazy." <laughs> And he's okay. like, I thought I would spice up the place. A couple of throw pillows, an action <laughs> news reporter. <laughs> oh, Jesus, that's killing me. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, a foot soldier did actually go and follow them, so he sees where they're staying. That yeah. plays later. You got scary. Um, but April wakes up and sees the guys, and she does this, like, weird, it's like a high-pitched whine. It's like, ooh. I can't even do it, but she does it for a long time. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not blowing your eardrums out. I'm no. trying to get away from the microphone on the laugh loud. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but then they all scream at each other. That was exactly it, though. They're just like, Ooh. oh, I can't even do how high she did it, yeah. though. <laughs> but yeah, they. She screams when she sees Splinter and the turtles and. Uh, Splinter talks to her. He's like, Miss O'Neill, it is okay. And she's like, hey, wait, did you just mug me? You you have the same accent as the guy that mugged me in the... I know, right? Miss O'Neill, I have a message for you. <laughs> Shut it. Slap your face again. <laughs> it's like, that's what they all just do to her. They're like, <laughs> you think we are the good guys, but we have a message for you. Shut it. And she just keeps getting slapped. It's like, damn it. That'd be funny if like they're like, well, April, thanks for saving us. <laughs> They just keep hitting her. <laughs> Poor April. It's hilarious. Uh, April has a line here where she thinks she's dreaming. And she's, she has a line where she's like, why can't I ever dream of Harris and Ford? She says it weird. <laughs> You're killing me. Harris and Ford. I don't know. Like, people, the way they talk always stick out to me. So when someone says something interesting, it always sticks in my head. Ugh. She's like, how come I couldn't dream of Harris and Ford? I can't even see my notes. Oh, I can't see my notes because my eyes are all watery. <laughs> and then one of our cats thinks I'm crying, so he's consoling me. <laughs> well, then we get a little bit of backstory of the turtles here. It says they've lived in the sewers for 15 years. And Splinter says he used to be a rat in a cage, despite all his rage. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. He was uh, the pet of Master Yoshi. Who This dude was like a martial arts guy, I guess. Because it shows him doing it, and yeah. it shows Splinter, like, learning it. Yeah, as, like, a little rat. 
like a tiny rat. Yeah. But Splinter says, we can tell it here. It doesn't matter. We don't have to wait. Basically, what happened with Splinter's backstory is that Master Yoshi was in love with a woman, with this mm, other guy, a Rokusa. Yeah. Well, I think they were really in love together. Yeah. But this other guy was jealous and wanted her for himself. His name was Orokusaki. Oh. And, um... Orokusaki. That's yeah. fun to say. Orokusaki. You should try it. Orokusaki. Orokusaki. Suki. <laughs> Suki. <laughs> well, I was just doing True Blood. <laughs> Suki. Stackhouse. Splinter learned martial arts by watching him. They traveled to New York for some reason, I forget. But... Master Yoshi comes home one day, and his this dude is wearing construction gear. He's got like a hard hat on. So, like when you, when I first watched this as a kid, I don't know why, but I just assumed it was ancient China. <laughs> <laughs> but then when he comes in later, he comes in and he finds that his wife or whatever uh, is dead. Yeah. But this dude is wearing like hard, a hard hat and construction outfit, and I'm just like, wait, what time is this? What time? <laughs> it's he, ancient China. Well, he said 15 years ago, but I guess I guess people could be up to date with martial arts and still be in the time current time frame. But yeah, when it shows him doing like the martial arts, I was like, Oh, a long time ago. But I'm like, wait, rats don't live that long. So, but basically what happened is a Rokosaki killed him and then killed master Yoshi. Yeah. And splinter's cage got knocked over. Splinter escaped and scratched the shit out of a Rokosaki's face. Yes. And a Rokosaki had a saw like a sword, and cut off one of Splinter's ears, like the tip. Damn it. And then Splinter escaped into the sewers. Only the tip. Just the tip. So he came upon turtles in the sewer um, in a liquid. And it shows like a like a canister and it says radioactive. Oh, shit. And he's like, I, he says he put them in a coffee can. He's like, I, I put them in a coffee can. Well, everybody knows that if you combine toxic waste with coffee... You get Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> With coffee. That was it. That was the catalyst. <laughs> uh, but one day, they started talking, and he was freaked out. And he was teaching them how to do kung fu, martial arts, and stuff. And, and he spoke one time, too. And it shows him, he's like, <gasps> like he spoke. Oh, my gosh. Well, I think the first words one of them speaks is, pizza. <laughs> yeah. Pizza. Like a little baby yeah. voice. That's funny. And then you see one of them in the background is going, radical, radical, radical. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Yeah, so he's like, that's our story. 15 years later, here we are. Boom. And he's like, the Foot Clan, I don't know if they know it's a Rokusaki at this point, but he was like, oh, the Foot Clan, yes, it's from ancient Japan. They've been around forever, and we, you know, standard hero stuff. We try to stop the bad guys. Yeah. Oh, and he, he introduces them at this point, too. He's like, Leonardo. Yes, yeah, so Donatello. All the different... Because they weren't really introduced before. No, I don't think so. But he's like, Michelangelo. And Michelangelo's like, it's me. <laughs> or no, Michelangelo goes, uh, dur, 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 dur. I th one of them. Oh, and does some kind of funny thing. Someone, yeah. And Raphael is like um, picking his teeth with his sigh. Like, mm. So they take April back to her house. They go up through the sewers and <laughs> they're just walking through these sewers here. You, you would think they would come across like a dead hobo down there. Oh, damn. Shit everywhere. <laughs> but, yeah, it looks way too clean. But... And the turtles don't wear shoes. Eesh. Yeah. But like one time we were walking down here and I stepped on a needle and I felt weird for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised they don't like cut their feet up. Well, I'm sure it's turtles. They probably have like mm. harder skin or something. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. So they're all having fun and they're talking... You know, they're doing, imp or Michelangelo's doing impressions for uh, oh, April. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's doing uh, James Cagney, which is an old actor in the old day, olden times, which we may get to at one point on our other show. Oh, yeah. He's an old actor from that time frame. But yeah, Michelangelo's like, ooh, you dirty rat. <laughs> you killed my brother. <laughs> yes. And April's like, oh, Splitter must love that one. And they're all like, what the fuck did you just say to me? <laughs> And then she's like, it was a joke. Oh and they're God. like, oh. Just calm down. There is something funny that happens where she was like, well, I would invite you guys into my apartment, but all I've got is cold pizza. Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo like pops out like a gopher in one of those games. It's like, Brrr. he's like, let's go for it. Yeah. And then she was like, what do you guys like on your pizza? And I don't remember who it was. But Michelangelo. Like, Flies, bugs, you know, the, the same thing. And then he's like, I'm just joking. It's, like, it's a joke. It's <laughs> a joke. So they leave, they go back to their hideout, and they find that it's been broken into, and Splinter is gone. Oh, man. 
And this is where Ralph screams really loud. He does the, where he's like breathing in a few times. He goes, I'll try to do it my best. He's like, (laughs) (laughs) that was weird. (laughs) I swear. I think he's just kind of, he's not breathing in, but I think he's more just, uh, Kind of like, you know, building up to the screen. Gearing up. <laughs> no, I know. You're, no, I know. You're doing good. I like it. Keep it in. But it's funny because it cuts to outside the sewers. There's an old lady walking, or an old man, I think, but he's walking over the sewer grate and oh, he hears yeah. him scream. He's not like, holy shit. He pokes his umbrella out. He's like, Bunk. <laughs> <laughs> and he just keeps walking. That's what you do in New York. Yeah. Keep walking. No. Well, we cut to... Uh, well, that's funny. I was going to mention in the scene where Raphael goes over the taxi, and the guy's like, what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. The, the cab driver goes, looks like it was some sort of big title. Goes, <laughs> anyway, you going to LaGuardia? <laughs> it's just like he doesn't even care. Oh, that's funny. So we cut back to April's house. She opens the door, and all the turtles are standing there, and they're all, like, sad and crying. Mm-hmm. And she's all like, what's wrong? And you just, Leonardo hit, again, I like the way that some people say words. It just sticks with me. Mm-hmm. But Leonardo just goes, splinter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But I just love the way that people say words. It just sticks in my head. <laughs> so in the middle of the night, we see April's boss, Charles, get a phone call, and... It's the chief of police, and he's like, oh, yeah, we should talk about your son. Mm-hmm. So the next morning, Charles shows up at April's house unannounced, and all the turtles, like, freak out and go into hiding. Yeah, but it's so funny. She's like, you guys should, and she, like, turns around, and they're, like, gone. Yeah, she's like, hide. Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Which, they're not that great because you see Michelangelo, he's like hiding under the kitchen table yeah. later. <laughs> what? Like, Donatello actually is smart about it when they go into the bathroom. You know, he's in the he's in the shower. I don't know why he opens it, but I think Charles opens up the shower curtain for some reason. Oh. And she's like, don't! don't! And he opens it, and Donatello is, like, hanging up from the, the ceiling, ceiling. Yeah. Which is a little more ninja-like, but she says something. She's like, he's like, what? Why are you freaking out? She's like, because I don't want you to see my unsightly pet to bring. <laughs> the, they do have a weird relationship. Like, a boss just comes over to your house and shit. I guess. I don't know. Rummage yeah. through your back. Room? Yeah, I don't, I don't the know fuck why. Out. But yeah, he's trying to tell her to drop the story. He's like, drop mm. the story of the foot because Danny is with him. So it's implied that Charles, her boss, made some sort of a deal to get Danny out of jail. Yeah. But Danny's like walking around in her house and he looks in a mirror and behind him he sees Michelangelo under the table. Mm-hmm. And Michelangelo's like, oh fuck! So when Danny turns around, he's gone. Yeah, it was like a scary movie. You know, you see something in the mirror and you turn around and it's gone. It's like, holy fuck. It's funny if one of them, just another one appears behind him. It's like, <laughs> breaks his neck. <laughs> That'd be like the comic books. She doesn't know these turtles. She doesn't know if they kill or not. It's like, well, April, we killed them. Now we got to eat them. Yeah, she's very trusting. <laughs> so he Charles leaves and April's like, whoo, we made it. And then Michelangelo just comes out of nowhere and he's like, wow, that was close. Like scares the shit out of her. Oh, wow. And he's like, geez, April, you should switch to decaf. He's got a lot of dumb lines. Oh, yeah. There, there is a lot of cheesy lines in here, but it, it works. So we see Charles and Danny driving through the subway and – or through the subway, through traffic. And Charles is trying to talk to him. And he's, like, yelling at him. And he's like, I don't even know where you got your, your Walkman. He's like, I don't even know where you mm-hmm. get one of those, where you got one of those. And he's trying to talk some sense to him. And Danny just gets out and runs into the subway and leaves. Yeah, I mean – He's in with the wrong crowd, so he doesn't he doesn't want to fess up to his dad. Yeah. And this is where we see the big warehouse where they party. It's got like a huge skate ramp. There's people like skateboarding in there. There's kids playing poker. There's one kid, I just remember the line where he's like, read them and weep, boys. <laughs> yeah. Full house. And they're like, ah. There's like those big video games. You know, like, like the arcade towers. Uh-huh. Yeah, and this is where he runs into Tatsu, Michael McConey. Well, weird. We wouldn't think that would be the name. Hmm. Oh, he does his voice. Wow, they dubbed him, so that's not even his real voice, where he's like, go, play. Oh, fuck. Wow, poor guy. Toshishiro Ubata is the guy who plays him. He doesn't even have a picture on IMDb. Um, But yes, Sam Rockwell is like showing these kids around, and he's like, anything you want, any time you want. And one of the kids is like, you got cigarettes? And he pulls up like these boxes, and he's like, regular menthol. Mm. But yeah, a little kid bumps into Tatsuo, and not his voice is like, go, (laughs) Play. Not his voice. 
And we see in the back room, they're training these kids to eventually become foot soldiers. Mm -hmm. These kids are fighting and, you know, one of them gets beaten and then Tetsu comes back there and the other kid like bows to him and Tetsu like kicks him in the face. Yeah, they're rough, man. He goes, never lower your face to an enemy. (laughs) Which maybe that's why this guy that does his voice on IMDb looks white as can be. So maybe that's why he's doing a bad Japanese voice again. Oh, because he's too white? It's not. Yeah, he's not Japanese. (laughs) (laughs) This is killing my voice now when I'm doing it. Be like, never lower your voice up. Oh, man. So now we see this big thing where all the kids or something, they... They know it's time to go into the back hall or whatever, but Shredder comes out finally. We see him. Yeah. And Tatsu comes in and he's unfurling like his robe and showing all his like spikes and shit that he's got on his mm-hmm. arms. He's got like um spike. Oh God, what are they called? Like gauntlets or something. Shoulder pads. Yeah. And he gives a kid a foot mask and he was like, oh yes, you are now part of the foot clan. And we see Splinter is chained up in the back. He's like chained to a fence. They put him on a box, which was nice. You figure if they were being mean to him, they would just kind of chain him with no support. But Which it's so funny that the foot masks look like flies. It's like the fly yeah. fly head with like, um, I don't know, it's got like a cloth pullover and then um, like metal lattice yes, work no, or something for the eyes. It does look much like an eye, yeah. But Shredder is like... Oh, if anyone knows anything about these turtles. And Danny, it shows him speak up. He, like, raises his hand. He's like, actually, I saw one today. So we see the turtles at April's house. They're watching the news, and April is like, oh, I was saved. And if they're watching, Leonardo, Donatello, Michelangelo, or no, I think she says Raphael. It's like, Mm -hmm. if anybody's watching, Raphael, thank you. Yeah, special thank you. And he's all like, oh, shit. Yeah, because she talks about the foot again, and this is where, uh... Charles is in the background of the office, and he gets a phone call from the chief, and you just hear him in the back. He's like, I thought we had a deal. Mm-hmm. They're making fun of Raphael because they're like, they say he's blushing, and Raphael throws a sigh in between Donatello's legs. <laughs> he's like, well, check it. <laughs> They get into a fight. Raphael is all like, we got to get out there and find Splinter, and Leo's like, we got to wait. You know, mm-hmm. April's going to help us get information, and Ralph storms out in a huff and goes to the roof. Yeah, he's just trying to blow off some steam. Yeah, and uh, I don't know why this always stuck out to me, but Donatello and Michelangelo are watching the tortoise and the hare on TV, and Raphael is like yelling at the turtle to hurry up. <laughs> He's like, "Go!" He's like, "Ninja kick the damn rabbit." <laughs> we know the turtle wins. Come on. Yeah. So Raphael is on the roof, and all these Foot Clan members show up yeah. and start fighting him. And Casey Jones is watching him from like a rooftop away. You see him sitting. He's like fiddling with the radio but he's watching them and Raphael's like getting his ass well first off he's winning and then he does the whole like come on (laughs) how do you guys expect to beat me and then a bunch more show up he's like good answer yeah right yeah they just keep coming they're just a shit ton of them yeah so um April shows back up and they go downstairs she apparently lives above a like a second hand store Mm-hmm. Like a used goods store, and they're all like... Like an antique shop. Yeah, place, exactly. Yeah. And they're all kind of like seeing different things here. Michelangelo uh, walks up behind Leonardo with cymbals and hits it in his head. Oh, yeah. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Not going to be able to hear for a little bit. That's okay. So some time has passed, and we see them walking back up to April's apartment. And April's like, is Raph going to be okay? And one of them's like, oh, I'm sure he'll drop in at any minute. And it shows yeah. him drop his body through the skylight. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. And April was like, oh, is he? And Leonardo's like, no, he's still alive. And Michelangelo has a line here with all the foot in the clay. And he's like, whoa, and I thought insurance salesmen were pushy. <laughs> and then he gets into a nunchuck off with this other guy. This guy has mm-hmm. nunchucks, foot clay guy. And he's like, hoo, ha, hoo, ha. Michelangelo's like, oh, a fellow trucker, eh? And he reaches behind and then he does like the nunchucks. I always wanted to do that. It, yeah, it seems like it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But it it escalates. It just keeps going back and forth until eventually Michelangelo is just spinning them on the tip of his finger. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, keep practicing. And then they all start fighting. It's like a dance off, but like a nunchuck off. Yeah. They, they have different things here where... Um, Mikey says, Wheel of Fortune, and Donatello spins Michelangelo on the floor and, mm-hmm. like, hitting people. And I think one of pe- one person puts Donatello's head in April's uh, 
fish tank and he spits water in another dude's face. Oh, shit. So then, you know, they keep fighting and then eventually they realize that there's a lot of people and Donatello's like, you know, guys, I, I don't think this place is structurally uh, sound and more Foot Clan members jump in and the floor mm. gives away. And they drop into the antique shop. Tetsuo shows up with more Foot Clan and they're... More and more and more. Like, Yeah. I think he's just putting masks on people out in the street and like, <laughs> get in here! All right, ho- homeless man, here you go. <laughs> get in there! Fight. So I think the turtles would be able to win if they weren't fucking around. Like I think it's Leonardo. He yeah. like grabs onto like bike handles. He jumps up and like hangs from him. He's like kicking Foot Clan members in the face, and then it breaks and he falls to the floor. Yeah, they're just kind of fucking around. Yeah, Michelangelo has the symbols again. He's like hitting people in the face. I'm like, just fight him. And um, the Foot Clan have like these axes now. They were like handing out these axes, and yeah. they're all swinging. And this is where Casey Jones comes in mm-hmm. he's like i gotta help these guys and leonardo's like who the heck is that and mike's like wayne gretzky <laughs> on steroids <laughs> so they start fighting again well a foot member is like trying to swing his axe at one of the turtles and misses and hits the power line yeah and he that's starts right getting shocked and you hear him he's like ooh, 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 ooh. but then all the lights go out yeah and then a fire starts oh that's right and and april's like I got a trap door. Yeah, so they all escape, and Leonardo's like, are you coming to to Casey Jones? And he's like, I'll cover you. And they all escape, and then Casey Jones escapes out, and they get into a a van. April has this big van, and they they leave. Down by the river. (laughs) Yeah. and Well, it's kind of a nod to in the cartoon, the Turtles had this big battle van. Mm -hmm. So I think this van that April drives is a nod to that, but they're driving away, and she sees... That her home or her apartment and the antique shop is like burning down to the ground. I wonder if they copied Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo's got a van. Yeah, I don't know, but it didn't have like weapons and stuff. But maybe I don't know. Mm. And we see Danny. He's on like a rooftop across the way, looking at this, watching the fire. And he's kind of like you see, you you get the feeling that he's kind of like, oh shit. Yeah, like, he's got second thoughts. Yeah. like I'm probably shouldn't have told him. Um, there's a funny moment in the scene where April gets a phone call, like the, her answering machine picks up while they're all fighting. Her answering machine is like hanging from the ceiling and it's like got fire coming down the the little line, Mm -hmm. but it's her boss. And he's like, April, he's like, I'm sorry. He's like, but you're fired. Yeah. And I forget what he says. I'm so personable that I come over to your house, but I'm going to fucking call you and tell you when you're fired. Right. I'm not going to do this in person, which that would be me. I'd be like, oh, this is awkward. Well, yeah. But uh, he's like, I know this comes as a blow. And the answering machine, the wire breaks from the fire and like hits a foot member in the face. Nice. And Casey Jones is like, you can say that again, Chuck. It comes as a blow. Get it. Ah. So we see Shredder, he goes into Splinter's room where he's keeping him hostage and he like smacks him in the face. Mm. And he's like, shut it. No, he's like, how do these things know how to fight? Yeah. And he's like, uh, duh. Radioactive and coffee. Uh, Or toxic waste and coffee. Duh. Yeah, he's like, I taught him. (laughs) He's like, the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) So he gives his second-in-command, Tetsu, a glare, and then Tetsu starts knocking boxes over and shit. He's, like, mad. Yeah. And then this is where he goes into the like, place where all the foot are training, and Tetsu beats the shit out of this dude, this one Foot Clan guy. Oh, yeah. Which, I guess, in the original version, this guy was dead. Like, he had killed this kid. But they thought that was too dark, so they added yeah. in. They added a line where you hear somebody in the background be like, he's okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's, like, he's still breathing. But yeah, in the original, he just fucking murdered this guy. I did read, and gosh, sorry if this is wrong, but uh, I think it was you. the UK had them change some stuff because they thought it was too violent. Oh, really? Like they had to take out the word ninja. Weird. Um, so yeah, they would have probably been really against this part if the kid would have died. Yeah. Or maybe that's where they're like, okay, we'll just put in a little dub. We'll dub in some words that he's okay. We'll, yeah. Oh, he's okay. He, is that okay, UK? You okay with that? <laughs> Well, I did read in the trivia that the director got fired at the end of this movie when they were editing it because he had a vision of a much darker movie. Mm. And they fired him and edited it the way they wanted it to. But yeah, he was like, I wanted it to be darker. Well, that makes sense because I did read that he wasn't really part of it. It didn't say he got fired, but there's like, he just wasn't around. The guy that plays (laughs) Michelangelo, Josh Pace, uh, was on a podcast a while back and said that at the very end of it, he got fired during the editing phase. Oh, well, the editor, that lady... 
Uh, Sally Minky. Yeah. She got fired, but she ended up doing okay because she went on to um, edit uh, Quentin Tarantino's films. Yes, Sally Minky. Yeah, until she... Passed away. Passed away in 2010, yeah. So, Danny meets Splinter in the back room, and he's all like, um, he's like, Splinter asked him where his dad is or where is his family, and he's like, oh, my dad doesn't care about me. And yeah. Splinter is like, oh, all dads care for their kids. He's basically like talking, talking him up. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them. In this movie for Danny, it, it works, I suppose. So all the turtles and everyone escape to April's farmhouse that she says she's got upstate. It's like beaten down and stuff. And we get like a, the movie kind of stalls a little bit here where they're just kind of hanging out. Raph is fucking beat the shit up and they put him in a tub sideways yeah so i'm like oh he's drowned because they put him in up si- like sideways and his face is in the water well, he's supposed to be a turtle right I they know. can breathe under wa- underwater blah, 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 blah. i guess so right i don't can know they if they breathe? can breathe i think they can just stay I under think they can, yeah i don't know should well, they just kill them <laughs> that's what i was thinking <laughs> Uh, but April is doing these amazing comic book drawings of them, which I'm assuming may have been the real artist. Maybe. I don't know. She's doing drawings of what they're all doing. Like Casey Jones and uh, Donatello are working on a truck. They're trying to fix it up. And there's a funny thing you see where they're calling each other like um, they, they're making fun of each other by calling each other names in the alphabet. So they're like, yes. oh, geek breath. And he's like, oh, fart mouth or something like that. You have to go, like, in the alphabetical yeah. order. He's like, fart mouth. He's like, oh, whatever you say, geek breath. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I would be awful at it because my brain just doesn't yeah. fire that fast. And he's like, ho is for brains. And he's like, what What are we on now? And he's like, oh, we're, now we're on J or whatever. But it's fun. Yeah, they're going down the <laughs> alphabet. But they get the truck working, and Donatello almost hits Casey and drives the truck out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Leonardo has not left Raph's side. Yeah, he feels really bad. And we get some uh, sexual tension between April and Casey. Yeah. He tells her that she was fired. And because she's like, well, I got to call my boss. And he's like, uh, Chuck? Yeah. She's like, how did you know that? And he's like, yeah, he called. Uh, you're, you're fired. He left a message. He calls her Broadzilla at one point. Casey does. Apparently in the trivia, he never calls her by her name in this movie. He calls he, her like Toots and. Babe and Princess. Yeah. And all these slang words for women and she finds it very degrading and then she's all like i hate you but i like you yeah and and elias cotias i gotta tell you man he's a good looking man he's bald now he's lost that hair but he's got longer hair um good looking dude yeah i mean not bad they kind of get to know each other a little bit he's sitting on this swing and they're kind of arguing and the swing breaks while he's sitting on it yeah <laughs> it's an old farmhouse i mean come on so Raph wakes up and Leonardo freaks out and he, he does the like, hey, where am I? He's like, what does a guy got to do to get some food around here? <laughs> and this is um, on the We Hate Movies podcast. They always reference this line. But uh, Leo's like, get Raph some food now. That's funny. And you want to talk about product placement here. Raph and Leo hug it out here. They They basically they're like. He's like, Raph, uh, he's like, you know what I said before about not needing you? Because he said that. He's like, good, yeah. who needs you? He's like, you know you know what I said about not needing you? And Raph is like, Leo, don't. <laughs> and then you hear Donatello go, it's a Kodak moment. Oh, man. You remember that? It was, like a, it was an advertisement for cameras back then. It was like, it's a Kodak moment. I'm like, it's in a song. I don't know the... It's like a... More of a rap song. Kodak moment, come use your hand. Oh, okay, oh, anyway. I don't know. But you it can was edit an... all that out. <laughs> <laughs> it was an advertisement back in the day for Kodak cameras. Right. Like, it's a Kodak moment. Kodak was a huge name for cameras. That would be like now. Well, I think it's kind of out of date now. But back in mm-hmm. the day for them to be like, the cost of buying clothes, $50. <laughs> the cost of buying gas, $60. Mm-hmm. Like, the cost of being with your family over vacation period priceless Aww. remember those commercials yeah. yeah memories so we get some more sexual tension where april has like a crick in her neck and casey jones is like trying to massage her and she gets up and he like forces her down on the chair yeah and like is is working and she kind of does the whole like oh, it, oh yeah if you can't see my face it's a little strange i didn't like this yeah i thought it was a little pushy i mean he kind of comes off as this 
rough, nice guy. Yeah. But then he was really forceful at this point. And I'm just all like, if you guys knew each other a little longer, I would be like, okay. Get yeah. It. But boy, this kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But. It does. It doesn't play very well today. I mean, yeah, it is strange. Michelangelo does come in and he looks like he's very sore. And April's like, would you let some ointment for that? And he pulls out turtle wax from the cabinet. <laughs> and he's like, ah, like laughing. <laughs> And there is a funny scene here where we show Casey Jones like cutting vegetables with Leonardo's gigantic sword. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. I'm like, that's a new technique. We should get one of those. Yeah, that'd be nice. It seemed like it'd be a pain in the ass, but uh, Leonardo, he's outside meditating and he makes contact somehow with Splinter. Yeah. He's like, Leonardo. He's like, he <gasps> Splinter! He appears in the fire. In a minute. Yeah, Leonardo oh, just makes contact with him. Just but kidding. It's funny, there's a scene when Leonardo runs in on him, they're playing Trivial Pursuit, and he's, and Raphael's like, what Russian novel was set during the Napoleonic War? Um, and he's like, War and Peace. There's a very funny movie called Loaded Weapon with Emilio Estevez, where he's like, in the movie, it, it's kind of like the Naked Gun or Airplane, where they're making okay. fun of other movies. Uh -huh. But there's a scene where Emilio Estevez is crawling around in the sewers, and he comes out, and it shows him like in front of that scene. He, mm -hmm. like, accidentally comes out in front of the turtles. Oh. <laughs> and it's this exact scene. I'll show you later if I can find it. But he, he does that thing where he's like, what Russian novel is set during the Napoleonic War? And then Emilio Estevez is like, war and peace! That's so funny. Yeah. And oh. they're all like, Rawr. Yeah, I can't. I gotta see that. But Leo comes in here and he's like, he's alive! He's Spl Splinter's alive! And so they all go out into the woods and, yeah, they're sitting around a fire. And I think it's Michelangelo that has... um marshmallows oh well yeah yeah like they're gonna just have you big have camp. to and they're like put those away and Raphael's like leo if you brought us out here for nothing oh, right so they all have to like concentrate and then yes the force ghost of splinter appears in this fire mm -hmm. it and turns like blue yeah and... i'm just thinking to myself when i watched it like it did it made sense when i was a kid but now i'm like how the fuck are they doing this <laughs> now we're getting mystical in this shit yeah just don't question it it's fine so you know splinter tells him he loves him very much and you know they have to come together again and oh. but he's like you i love you my sons and Raphael at the end when he disappears Raphael's like crying so, but we do see casey jones and um april o'neill on the porch they're like talking to each other and then the turtles just sh show up and casey has a funny line where he's just like he's like guys i told you i hate it when you do that like when they just appear out of nowhere <laughs> We're ninjas. What else are we going to do? Well, I don't know if you were paying attention to when we watched What We Do in the Shadows the other night, but we're watching the new season, and Nanja is running a nightclub. But um, the blonde vampire who does the voice of – her name's Kristen Shaw, but she does the voice on Bob's Burgers of the girl yeah. with the rabbit ears. Uh -huh. That was the joke they kept doing in the other episode is that she kept appearing like around her shoulder every yes. time. <laughs> She'd be standing in front of her and then right over her. She's like, ah! She's like – Innocent but creepy. Yeah. Yeah, I love she, her. She just appears and is like, oh, hello. She's like, ah. That's who I hope to be one day. <laughs> so they, the turtles say it's time to go back. At some point in the movie, we find out that Danny has gone missing from the foot. He he has left. So, okay. So the turtles and everybody, they go back to their their hideout. And Raph says something where he says, I think they're hiding in the back of the van. And Raph says, like, it's an immigration joke. He's like, I know what it's like to travel without a green card. <laughs> it's like, shit. Yikes. And Casey Jones is all excited. He's like, all right, great, great. You guys got like a shop around here or something? And he sees them mm -hmm. going into the sewer and he's like all not happy about it. Yeah, there is a kind of a homophobic line here where one of the turtles, um, or Casey says that, uh, oh, the turtle called Casey claustrophobic. Yes. And he goes, what? I haven't even looked at another man before. Yes, and that's like, right. Oh, my gosh. He didn't mean homophobic. He says, something like, you want to get your nose crushed in? For yeah. For like, sake. I've never even looked at another man. Yeah. Like, oh, come on. That's awful. Because, yeah, they go down into the sewer and, and Casey's like freaking out because mm -hmm. he's like, I got to stay down here. And that's when he's like, you're claustrophobic. And we get that amazing line. Yeah, of, never that's... looked at a man before. Like, oh, jeez. That was awful. As if that would be so bad. Yeah, even if you did, that doesn't mean anything. You can find another, the same sex, attractive. Well, they find Danny down there in the sewers. Mm -hmm. And he says he ran away from his dad and he ran from the Foot Clan. And 
So he's hanging out with them, and then um, Michelangelo and Donatello find a pizza, and they're like, oh, God. And, and he's like, is it good? And he goes, do you like penicillin on your pizza? No. And Michelangelo does like the... Dur, dur, dur. <laughs> they're giving it a burial. That's like, right. Dur, dur, dur. Oh, gosh. They just love pizza so they, much. They do. Um, April is showing Danny her drawings that she did while they were at the house. And he's like, these are really good, April. He folds them and puts them in his pocket. Yeah, these are awesome. Let me just crease them up here. Fucking asshole. Jesus Christ. Well, that just comes into play later. But I yeah, know. he's like, crease, crease. Oh. Like, oh, fucking hell. You don't do that. So Casey is sleeping in his truck, you know, above the sewers. And he can talk about being claustrophobic. It shows him not being comfortable in there. Yeah. He, like, rolls a window down. It's a tiny little truck. Well, it's I guess tinier. Gets some some air, and he can see farther, but... I guess. Well, I think they, they tell Danny or whatever that, you know, they're going to get Splinter or they're looking for him, so Danny knows. But in the middle of the night, Casey sees Danny leaving the sewer, and he follows him. Yeah, he's like, what's this little brat up to? Yeah, Casey follows him back to the big warehouse, and... Danny somehow gets past all these guys. He's been gone for God knows how long, but he sneaks in and he sees Splinter. And this is when I noticed it. I was like, oh, he's wearing a Sid and Nancy t-shirt at this point. It's like hit both, like Sid and Nancy. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> what a weird role model. Wow. Um, This is where Splinter tells him how he was a pet and Orokusaki killed him mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. We already went over that and everything. Casey does the classic James Bond here where he's in here. He knocks a foot soldier guy out and puts his shit on his yeah, clothes on that's smart classic james bond i mean that's a great way to disguise yourself because i mean you're covered head to toe yeah and well shredder pops out from behind danny and he sees the drawings that april had made of the turtles Eek. he's and he realizes that the turtles are back and tells all of his guys to go out and kill them and this is where we get the scene where all the foot clan are going under this into the sewers you know the there's this Dude, this one dude goes into the sewers by crawling in underneath a curb. You know the curbs that they have? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I the runoff, the water yeah, runoff. Yeah. Like this dude crawls into the sewer by going into that little hole in the curb. Like it? You know? Yeah. In the same kind of spot. Mm -hmm. Dude, that would have freaked me out doing that. Like, mm -hmm. like oh, it gives me free, it gives me nightmares to think about it. But, uh, you know, I have a very big feel, bad feeling of getting stuck in a very tight space. Yeah. There's that are getting dude. pulled in. Yeah. There's that dude that died in a cave upside down oh, when he was doing cave yes. diving. That's like so sad. That would have been miserable. Yeah. Like, ugh. It just, it freaks me the fuck out. I'd be like, can you inject me with something and just kill me right now? Yeah. Please? Sid, and, <laughs> Sid and Nancy me and put that heroin in my foot. Do something for God's sake. I um, guess they really couldn't do that, but I'd be like, do something. I know. And that's all. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're just going to have to die a horrible, painful death. Yeah. Because we can't kill you because then we would be committing murder. Okay. Well, that seems like the world today anyway. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> so all the Foot Clan rush into the turtles lair and they're all, the turtles are gone. And then smoke fills the lair and all of these foot soldiers are knocked the fuck out. Whoa, they were ready for them. Yeah. They were like, oh, Danny's gone. Shit. We got to come up with this plan because the foot soldiers are going to be coming. Foot soldiers just... Shoo -shoo. Shoo -shoo -shoo. I got excited, so everything just ran together. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we cut back to the, the, the warehouse in KCC Splinter, and he's all like, whoa, like shocked to see this gigantic rat. Yeah. Splinter is like, who are you? And he's like, I'm a friend. I'm here to get you out. And they, you know, he unlocks him and takes him, and Tetsuo, the number two, is standing there with a bunch of foot soldiers before they can get out. You know, it's funny. I think the turtles, like, puppeteer type stuff is good like their whole outfit yeah but i wasn't wasn't too keen on splinters yeah they make him seem very frail which mm -hmm. you know maybe he is i don't know it just i was just like man I, I they could have done a little bit better i feel but i mean it's still good it's still good yeah well casey is getting his ass kicked by this guy and he's mm -hmm. talking shit to him while he does it too he's like hmm yeah maybe a little banaka a little will help you <laughs> he's telling him and then and he, like, beats the shit out of them. And in this warehouse, there's a bunch of stolen shit that, like, all these the Foot Clan is, like, selling and like stuff. Tons of, like, uh, cardboard boxes yeah. just stacked and they're piled high. Yeah, and one of the boxes Casey gets knocked into, he sees a bunch of golf clubs. He's like, hey, I know how these work. Yeah, so he yells four and then he 
swings it like a golf club, you know, like he's hitting a golf ball, but he swings it and hits Tetsuo, and this guy flies back like 50 feet. Hiya! He goes, four! <laughs> and this is where Sam Rockwell has his big scene here. He's like, what are we waiting for? Get him! Get him, guys! And Splinter's like, do you think Shredder cares for you? He cares nothing! Mm-hmm. Gave him a little pep talk. A little smack in the face. Yeah, and Sam Rockwell's like, we have a loyalty to the Shredder! And uh, Splinter is like, he cares nothing for you and uses you. And Rockwell is like, but we're a family. And Casey Jones is like, but this, this Six, here, he's like, what? that? And he points to the second in command guy, passed out. He's like, is that family? <laughs> yeah, is that is that what family does? There's a shit. Yeah, so Casey goes back and puts one of Splinter's arms around him. Danny's got the other. And Splinter, he, I don't know why this stuck out to me too, but when he picks up his arm, Splinter goes, Casey. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. <laughs> he, he talks so slow. Like, I'm like, I know I talk slow, but damn. Yeah. I put it in my notes that he says it in a very sexual way. Casey. Hey, baby. So now we cut back to the sewers and we see that all the Foot Clan members are escaping. They're all getting the fuck out of the yeah. sewers. And um, we see, like, Donatello is skateboarding down there and he's beating the shit out of all these uh, Foot Clan members as he skates by him. He's just, like, hitting them and shit. I put down here that um, Michelangelo is, like, they're, they're climbing up the side, like a fire escape up the side of the building the Foot Clan are. And Michelangelo, like, yells up at him. He's like, hey, save some for me. And a Foot Clan tries to decapitate him with an axe. Holy fuck. And Michelangelo's head goes into his shell. That's right, yeah. I mean, come on, he's a turtle. Yeah, and then he pops turtle. this guy. Turtle, turtle. Turtle. <laughs> he pops this dude in the face, and then he's like, God, I love being a turtle. Oh, gosh. So they all go to the rooftop, and they fight. There's a scene where uh, Raphael and Leonardo do, like, a double roll together. Where they're like, they're holding on to each other, but they're rolling. Yeah. And then Raphael comes out and like, kicks these guys, like, knocks three of them out. He, like, kicks them in the face. They're working together. Yes, they are working as a family. And he and Raph is like, triple play, I think. Or maybe that was in a different movie. We'll say it's this one. And Donatello keeps doing like a Larry from the Three Stooges throughout the movie. Yeah. He keeps going, <laughs> nah, nah. It just kind of shows the time. Cause I guess. Like, if you put anything in Three Stooges now, I mean, I don't know that it would reach very many people. I think they still are pretty famous. Like, did you ever watch them growing up? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I always read that, like, a lot of women didn't like them. Oh. Or may, maybe they don't. But I, I thought they were hilarious. It's just funny. But I just, I loved all their facial expressions <laughs> yeah. and stuff. I just, they, they were, yeah, they were hilarious. It was just funny how everything went wrong and how they dealt with it. It mm -hmm. just comical like situational comedy you know mm. but yeah donatello throughout the movie keeps doing that we're like nah, nah. <laughs> and this is where shredder finally shows up mm -hmm. he comes down and he's got this big spear that's like pointed at each end and leonardo they've never heard of this guy before never met him and leonardo is just like who the heck is that yeah, and it's so funny he's very stylish he's wearing this like reddish maroon glittery fighting gear yeah he's just like sparkle yeah, and Michelangelo to that says like, well, I'll never have to ask for a can opener. <laughs> no. Like if they would have busted out in a, a dance theme right here, I would have been like, okay, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, this is this is the scene. I mean, like they get their asses kicked by him. Like mm -hmm. they they go one at a time at him and he beats the shit out of him. And there's a scene where um, Donatello and Michelangelo play rock, paper, scissors to see who's going to go next. Yeah. <laughs> and Michelangelo, I think, loses. So he goes and gets his ass kicked and then... Uh, Donatello goes after him, and sp and uh, the Shredder holds his pointed spear like at his throat. Yeah, he could have killed him. Yeah, and I think I, I like how they put Shredder as being pretty powerful. Yes, and that the turtles don't just immediately defeat him. So that I mean, it was good. I like how they played this out. Yeah, no, and, and he doesn't hold Donatello. This comes in a second. But one thing I did read in the trivia about the Shredder is that this is the only movie that shows him as a martial artist. Hmm. The rest of it, he's just kind of a henchman guy. And in the second one, he gets this super ooze and turns into like a gigantic Shredder. Oh, wow. The super Shredder, they say. But yeah, in the other ones, he's not like a martial art guy that takes the turtles on himself. He's got his minion, minions to do that. Sounds like something we've got in the kitchen. A super shredder? Super shredder, yeah. <laughs> super shredder, you put this in, you get the, yeah. It's on an infomercial. We bought it for nine ninety nine. dollars 
three payments of nine ninety nine. Yes. Sorry. Well, we see Casey Jones. He sees some Foot Clan soldiers climbing up the wall or the the fire escape, and he's like, "Ooh, leftovers!" So he gets in a garbage truck and drives into the ladder, and they go flying. Oh yeah. And so he knocks some guys out. Uh, yeah, there's some really neat shots in this one. Yeah, there's some good things, and um, they so they don't hold Donatello down. What happens is, is they're all kind of like wheezing and gasping. They're just like, like oh, and and Mikey's like, well. Can anyone tell me where this went wrong here <laughs> or something? And and Leonardo kind of puts it together and he's like, he's like, I think this guy knows where Splinter is. And this is where Shredder is like, oh, the rat. And they're like, oh, God, he knows who Splinter is. And he says, oh, he alludes that Splinter is dead. Yeah. And that's when Leonardo freaks out and runs at him. And he quickly takes Leonardo down and points his spear at his face. Yeah. Yeek. Like, don't act rash around me. I'll kick your ass. Yeah, and the Shredder is like, throw your weapons. So they all toss it, and Michael it cuts very quickly. Michelangelo's nunchucks, one of them gets caught on the ladder as it falls. That's right. It comes into play. Yeah, Shredder is like, you fools. He's like, you might have all saved him had you taken me at once. He's like, but he dies. And he gets ready to stab Leo, and they're like, no. And then Splinter is there. Ta-da! Yeah, he's like... He's like, Orokusaki. And wouldn't you know it, the Shredder is the guy who killed his master. Yeah. And he takes his mask off and he has the big scar on the side of his face. Yeah. Splinter's like, I did that. Yes. <laughs> so the Shredder gets pissed off and he charges. Like, um, Splinter is standing like near the edge of the roof. And the Shredder like charges at him with his little spear. And wouldn't you know it, Splinter takes his num takes the nunchucks out and like wraps it around the spear and tosses the shredder over the yeah. side. Yeah, and he's holding on to him like Sh shredder is like over the side of the roof holding on to his spear, and Splinter is like holding him up basically, mm -hmm. so he doesn't fall. And Splinter's talking to him, trying to like talk him out of it, or to you know trying to help him or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the shredder tries to throw a knife at him or like a little sp little blade, and Splinter catches it, but lets go of the nunchucks, and that causes Shredder to fall into the back of the garbage truck. Mm, yes. And Casey walks up, and he goes, oops, and hits the garbage truck thing. Yeah, and it starts, like, smashing in all the garbage. Yeah, and you see blood. I'm like, oh, that's that's a little dark. Which, it doesn't make sense, because in the second one, he just comes back. He's I like, know. hello, I'm back. And I don't know what happened in the last one, but I'm here. Yes, I escaped at the last second. <laughs> all of my glitter saved me i guess well all the police in the news show up and charles shows up to talk to april and danny before he goes to talk to his dad gives april her 20 dollars back and he's like here this is yours I, i'm sorry and he goes to his dad for some reason i put 29 dollars in my notes oh really let me count it out for you <laughs> it's still 29 there's Here's a 20, 20. <laughs> a five one two three four okay we're good <laughs> But he talks to his dad. His dad's like, Danny, oh God. And, he, you know, they, they make up there. And, yeah, and he's like, Dad, nice. I, I want to be called Dan. And he's like, Dan? I'm a man now. I guess. When I was a kid, my, my legal first name is Ronald, but I always go by my middle name is Scott. Mm -hmm. When I was a young kid, I always was like, well, maybe as I get older, I'll use Ronald. Like when I grow up and become an adult, I'll be Ron. <laughs> Scott's just the kid. <laughs> it never happened. Yeah, no. I'm like, please don't change that. I already know you as Scott. Yeah, no. It'd be like we'd have to get married again because you'd be like a new person. Well, I'm thinking of changing it to Scott Andrew. I've always thought yeah. about it, but I just the the pain and the pain of changing it is what's holding me back. I know. April and Charles are negotiating, and she he's like, "What can we do to get you back? We need you to report on this story." And she's like, "Oh, well, I heard such and such over at the other station is the highest paid." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Well, now you are." It's like. I'd like a corner office. And he's like, you've got the corner office. So she agrees to come back. Good for her. He like, bitch, you fired me. You're going to give me all this shit. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And then the chief of police is talking to like Sam Rockwell. And he's like, what the hell happened here? And Sam Rockwell's character goes, oh, there's a warehouse on Eastman and Laird Street, which is the name of the creators of the comic books, Eastman and Laird. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like South Eastman and West Laird Street or whatever or something. But yeah, the Eastman and Laird are the guys that wrote and created the comics. That's cool. Casey is trying to woo April here. She's like getting makeup put on her to go on the air. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know. He's trying to be nice to her, and she just says, "Shut up and kiss me." Yeah, she's like, I think she said, "Go ahead and kiss me. I have a report to do." Yeah, and so they kiss, and uh, very romantic, of course. It's a, oh, yeah. it's a shock that they are not together in the rest of the movies. Casey is not in the second one. He is in the third for a minute, and then they go back in time and they see like his ancestor. It's the same guy. Oh, but he's playing like a an, a generations different character well that's too bad i really liked his character in this one yeah i thought it fit very well so in the third one i'll tell you this like when the turtles go back in time they are replaced with the samurai that they take the place of so casey jones's part in the third movie is just hanging out with these samurais while the turtles are in the time oh he takes them to like an arcade he's like hanging out with them it's funny at the (laughs) end when they're getting ready to switch places again there's this magic scepter that like starts twirling whenever they know that it's getting ready to be used so casey's like all right guys all right come on it's time to go and none of them speak english but one of the guys is like crying hugging him goodbye oh it's pretty funny that's cute so he becomes friends but he's really just a babysitter and he gets some he gets some uh time like his ancestor that he plays in the movie back in feudal japan like the garbage truck thing he shoots a cannon at the bad guy at the end, kind of an oops moment. No, oops. Like, oops, and the cannon goes off and knocks the bad guy into the water. Nice. So, but not in the second one. April, as far as we know, single. She's got a new apartment. Okay. And they find a new sewer in the second one. Very nice. Like, it's an abandoned subway. Oh, sweet. Pretty cool. And a lot of people don't like the third one. They're like, turtles going back in time. That's kind of dumb as shit. Yeah, but that'd be kind of weird. I always thought it was cool. They were in samurai armor and stuff, and... Uh, Mikey, at the very end of it, is like, I'm not going back. He's like, there's nothing here for me. And they're like, oh, Mike, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. And surprise, surprise, he comes back on his own. Yeah. yeah he's like, oh, I love you. And, but maybe we'll do the others at one sometime. Yeah, maybe. And, and we'll um, We got so many movies to do. Yeah. Never run out. But uh, the, the end of it there is that the turtles are, are cheering on Casey mm-hmm. and then... They're all like, oh, great, that was radical, that was amazing, and Splinter's like, I always liked Kawabunga. <laughs> and they do the Kawabunga. Oh, he's so funny. He's like, uh, I made a funny. Yeah, he's like, I made a funny. <laughs> that comes back again. He does that in the others where he's like, I made another funny. Uh, I think that's a cute. Yeah. That's a cute. That's a cute. So, like movies in this time frame, at the credits, we get a rap that just explains everything that happens. Mm-hmm. It's like, turtles, they're turtles, they're going around, they're fighting the shredder who's got stuff all around. Wicka, wicka, wicka. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> they were turtles in a sh- turtles in a sewer and got, got subjected to mutagen, and now they're fighting the shredder, and the shredder's gonna get them, and now he's getting them, and oh boy, he's got splinter. And I don't know, but it just tells you the movie. <laughs> funny yeah like Raphael, he's pissed at everyone so it just yeah it's just one of those raps where it tells you the story oh that's great ghostbusters i think had one ghostbusters 2 it's like spirits don't fear it i can't remember it but i think that's kind of cute that's clever yeah i don't know all those movies kind of had that i think the super with um joe pesci had that too it's like he's a super and he's now in this building and he's watching over these people and oh boy it ain't going well <laughs> It's um, like the, um, what's that show? Started making trouble in my neighborhood. Oh, Fresh kind of, Prince. Yeah, it's just like that. I'm like, who is, if anybody ever, yeah. if anybody's ever watched that show, you probably know that theme song. At oh, the beginning yeah, of course. From Heart. I mean, yeah. It's just so fucking catchy. So, yeah, that's it. I mean, like I said, of this series, they had two more movies. The next Turtles movie, after this movie came out in 1990, the second Turtles movie came out in 1991. Didn't I hear something about, didn't I hear, I think I read something about there's another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie coming I out? I just read that today, yeah, sometime maybe next okay. year it's going to be computer generated. Okay. Because after this, after this trilogy, they didn't have another one until 2000s. They did, um, well they had a TV show that didn't do well, but then they did a computer generated movie. Which I thought was good. Okay. It didn't do very well, I think. Mm. And then they made the two ones produced by Michael Bay, starring Megan Fox as April O'Neil. Oh, nice. They did those two, which I still to this day have never seen. I heard iffy things about it. Mm. Turtles, I didn't think looked very good. They're CGI. And then, yeah, they did two of those. And then, yes, now they're doing kind of a reboot of the series as a CGI. Well, that'd be neat. I think if we, I think it'd be cool if we did the, the, 
sequels? Yes. If we do the sequels and then watch that newer movie when it comes out, that'd okay. be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know, the, the CGI on the one they did, the cartoon one, was good, mm -hmm. but they made it kind of kitty. So mm -hmm. if they made one that looked more serious or, like, very stylized, it, it could be cool. Right. But I did enjoy it. Like, that movie gets a little weird because they're fighting – this guy has, like uh, – he's an immortal trying to bring together these monsters to unleash on the world. And so there's actual, like, monsters and demons and stuff. So it gets a little fantastical, but mm. – the kind of the the cartoon and the comics, I feel like eventually did that as well. So it's oh, nothing I'm sure. new. Yeah, that sounds about right. But um, I still like this movie. I mean, yes, I can go ahead and tell you that there's stuff in there that's kind of dumb or doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. But uh, I still enjoyed it. I really did too. Yeah. I mean, I thought the puppeteering. You have to think of oh, when this came out. Yeah. I mean, even um, because it was hold on here. Now, this is going to be like our longest episode ever. I know. Um, Jim Henson is, yes. is who made the the costumes. And they were like, it was the most advanced ever. And it took them 18 weeks to complete it. Wow. So, I mean, they were just, I mean, they were really good. I still thought yeah. they were really good for today. Yeah, they hold up. He, you know, Jim Henson was a master. He did all the mm -hmm. Muppet stuff. And this was the last movie he worked on before passing away. Yeah. But yeah, he, he went all out. He never half-assed anything that's for sure great well i loved it i hope you guys enjoyed this longer episode we did talk about like oh we have another podcast uh it's a different series called celebrity spotlight mm -hmm. we've already released one which was on lucille ball and by the time you hear this it will actually having um b arthur yep i had to remember oh my gosh <laughs> Um, so we listen to those. It's uh, where I go through and kind of talk about, you know, the actor, actress's life from childhood to death. Yeah. And um, I'm still getting used to it. I, I'm not very um, good at speaking out loud or, or reading things. So oh. bear with me while I keep getting practice and getting better. <laughs> I think it's great. Yes. But, but it's really cool information and I love doing the research and finding out everything about these uh the people and learning everything. So I really enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Um so my childhood movie, if you stay tuned in a couple of weeks, is gonna be a movie I can never remember called Little Monsters. Mm -hmm. Um eighty nine, nineteen eighty nine, I believe. Yeah, it came out I was nine years old. So if nobody knows, there's a eight year age gap between Scott and I. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's just a movie I just wanted to be in. Yeah, like I wanted it to be part of my life, and we'll we'll go into it more when we do the episode. But yeah, but yeah it's Fred Savage and Howie Mandel. Mm hmm. And little monsters coming up next in two weeks. All right. Well, that kicks off the childhood favorites month. So until next time, we'll see you guys then. Bye bye.